Hey guys, it's Jason Creel and it's the Lawn Care Life. Today I have got special guests with me and if you're a regular follower of the channel, you're going to recognize them. It's Greg and Betsy Seegers and they were on my channel, I believe back in March, and we did an interview because Greg left a steady full-time job to go into lawn care, which some of you uh, can relate to that. Some of you think it's crazy, some of you think it's a great idea. And I've had people come back and they say, Jason, uh, whatever happened to that couple? that uh, started the lawn business. Are they, are they holding signs up saying we'll work for food or did they make it? So what we're gonna do today is we're gonna interview them, got some questions for them of how it went in year one and hopefully this will be beneficial to you guys and uh, encouraging, motivating for those that are looking to get into the lawn business yourself. Let's get started right now. All right, here they are, survived year one uh, mostly. I, it looks like they're yeah. still happily married so that's a good thing. Um, so Greg and Betsy, tell us, for one, uh, after, well, I'm filming this in October, so we filmed you in March, you were just getting going, so how many customers did you guys get this year, and then how how did you go about getting, what was your marketing techniques? So what, we ended up with 60, about 65? About 65 regular. regular. Okay. Uh -huh. And uh, and mostly, we started out with Facebook, uh, and and. Tell, tell them how you did the Facebook thing. It was um, brilliant. Well, we just, show, you know, made it public, and then I asked some um, specific friends to share or to, you know, share our post in their neighborhoods. Because um, I think a lot of times what I've noticed is the um, when you're recommending um, services, most people want to hear from people they know. Um, and especially for lawn service, they want to use somebody who's already in the neighborhood That's a lot right. of times. And so, anyway, sharing to the Facebook to the neighborhood Facebook pages and getting my friends to do that um, was really helpful. Yeah, and then also, you know, during the process, we set up a, a Google My Business account, and and now we get more traffic from from Google My Business than anything. Of course, in order to do that, you've got to set up your website first, and um, so that was really important, setting up your own website and with all your contact information on there. Were you able to get some reviews uh, on, oh. uh, for, on Google, if people leave yeah. uh, Facebook reviews, Google reviews, and did you ask for those, or did they yes. just come naturally, or how did that work? So I um, would copy the link to our review page and send it to specific people. So um, try to get people that I could tell wouldn't mind doing that because some people just don't yeah. feel comfortable. And so especially if they gave us personally, if they responded to us personally and said, oh, hey, you guys did such a great job. Thank you so much. Then I would say, oh, wow, that's super sweet. Can you, would you mind just going ahead and clicking on here and just saying whatever you said on there? Yeah. Um, so I felt like that way it was organic and it wasn't just all of our personal friends doing that. Um, yes. And it was work, you know, work-based and honest i've seen people uh too in their first year I've, i'm curious to know how y'all approach this but sometimes people will uh if you know first year we just need work so we'll drive all over to do mo most anything and then some people say well no we're gonna sort of target a smaller area so w how would you describe that were y'all going wider and broader and now gonna maybe narrow it down year two or um, did you kind of stick local and, and try to keep a tight route yeah, so we, I guess the fortunate thing about I think about starting a business now is there's so many resources out there, and just you know, person after podcast after podcast and, and video just said you know talked about root density, and so we really took that into consideration when we were taking on jobs. Um, so we ended up in a couple of different places yeah. because we had friends in those places that you know either we. Um, served them or they recommended us in their neighborhood and we went to the neighborhood and ended up having enough to make it worth it to go to those places but then we just kind of as soon as we could we called it our borders and didn't go any any mm -hmm. further as tempting as it was at yeah. times and then also I mean we've had to let people go to because it's just after a while you realize that wow this just doesn't pay for itself to go all the way out here to do this and so um and when we've had to do that we've you know done our best to recommend maybe somebody in that area mm -hmm. to uh to take over their services yeah that's smart all right i wanted to ask this question um, because some people that that may work with their spouse uh it, it's not that's not my situation but for some it is so how did you guys working in the business together how did y'all decide like 
what what's going to be your role what's going to be my role here's what needs to be done this week so how, how did you even plan it out to talk about it and then execute it well there was no plan <laughs> okay you know well initially actually the plan was was maybe she might have to find a, a part-time job while i while i did this um it didn't work out that way um really what i needed i needed somebody to help schedule all my different jobs and so she started out really scheduling um using our you know using some software scheduling the routes talking to customers and she just you know i was at home yeah. and so we started spending more time together and uh, she would ride in the truck with me learned how to do estimates we learned that together really and um and then she kind of stayed on with that with the scheduling part uh talking to customers um doing some um you know a lot more of the facebook marketing um and then you know and then she got out there and started mowing and and weed eating and you know we'd probably a couple of days a week she'd come out there with me and uh so yeah we'd anything else what no else? no but it, but it was it. all organic though yeah, I mean, it we, just developed yeah we didn't we didn't plan it out yeah because i didn't really i just went out with them in the beginning to mow just for fun and then i realized wow it kind of goes a lot faster and I enjoy it, so mm -hmm. and so. I just kind of kept doing that until we got regular help. And, yeah, and, and um, really, still, it's a lot more profitable too yeah, when you got two people in the same household, mm -hmm. you know, working on a property. Yeah. All right, year one in the books. Uh, that the key in year one is surviving, and you guys did that. You didn't go out of business. And year two um, coming up, what what do you see is the is things that you would are going to be doing different adjustments you're going to make and to not have the sophomore slump next year. <laughs> well, I think there's a couple of things. First of all, we definitely realize the value of having help. And so uh, to have regular helpers with us is going to be really important. Um, also, being a little bit more picky about what yards I take at what price is going to be um, a key to that too. Um, there was probably some yards that, that we kept um, and maybe shouldn't have. Um, we'll certainly be going up on rates and, and hopefully they'll keep us. Um, but we'll go up on rates on a few of them. Others we got right. Um, but, yeah, we're going to uh, be able to pick your going forward, which ones we take. But, you know, I would say that, that in the beginning, it's okay to not be too picky. you gotta, you got you to gotta work, and you got to learn this stuff and, and figure out kind of what puts a smile on your face. So, um, I, after doing a few, estimating on a few yards, and then him, after he mowed it, realizing this is probably this is a this would be a higher price on this yard um i didn't like the feeling of that so i started just telling people hey i think it's going to be in this range and then but he really won't know until after he mows it the first time and then i felt like that gave us a little bit more freedom because the feeling of getting locked into a lower price um on the front end of a whole season i just didn't like that so and most people were really open to the idea at least they kind of know and it they I think they understand that that's what's going to be fair for us to you and so yeah i liked that and i think that we ended up doing that about midway through the year and so we'll do that a lot more next year greg uh you you had a, a steady job steady paycheck and i know it's scary for just about anybody who leaves that situation but now you know looking back after you've been through year one do you any regrets anything you would have um, done different wish you had hung on a little bit longer at your old job or what, what would you mm. say to that no no uh no i'm glad i did what i did and and really the timing of it was perfect starting in march uh for full mowing season and having everything i, I spent the winter preparing for this and so um so i think just having that time and, and that start date was really important i think important for most people uh probably starting in this business uh, when when every when the calls are coming in i need to clean up i need Need, need mowing service, uh, we we're able to, to start taking on those jobs. And almost, Im I wouldn't say immediately, well, immediately we, we started getting calls. And so uh, so really it was, it was pretty hopeful there at the beginning. And then it just, the calls kept coming and kept coming and kept coming until our schedule was pretty much full. And um, and then was able to, you know, take on a, a helper too. Uh, but no, there's no regrets. I would I don't think I'd do it any differently. Follow-up question on that, you know, what, what is it about it? And maybe some of us kind of know this answer, but like, was it just that you had an unlimited income? I mean, you know, the opportunity to make more money or, or you're not have to not have a set schedule, not have a boss. What, what was it about self-employment that, that you did like? Well, I think at, at some point, you know, you get control of your own time. And, uh, and, and that was really important for me. 
and sure, I mean, you still have to you know, get out there and, and you're away from your family, you're away from your home. Uh, but there's a lot of days where I took my son with me. Um, you know, obviously my wife came with me a lot. And so just having that time together was, uh, I don't know, was priceless to us. Even, you know, you know, maybe it's not, you know, it doesn't feel so steady as a job, but, but really, I mean, you know, I think there's risks either way. There's risks having one employer. Now I've got 65 employers, and if one fires me now, I've got 64 left and can get more. So, I, you know, I, I don't know that it's more risky even being out on your own necessarily. I totally agree. So it was priceless to me, though, for him to be home, like especially coming from um, shift work, for him to be home, you know, when – just he's more available for conversations with our teenagers and you know we were able to I'm the scheduler so I can totally manipulate everything to um, make it to where he's there when we go pick up our daughter from college or whatever so that it, it, that was amazing but with that being said I know sometimes you, you say oh I'm my own boss I got my own schedule and sometimes though it, it gets so demanding that, right. that you're like I wish I I'm working way more than I was at the old <laughs> job so how, do, how are you gonna keep that from you know what I'm saying? Because some of these guys are self employed. Yeah. They're out there saying, I'm working seven days a week, literally, just working yeah. all the time. And I know I've had to yeah. fight against that. So what? Well, I'd say pricing them, pricing them right for, for us. Pricing them right. Um, and also not getting, uh, not letting it get out of hand in a way. Like we, At some point, you can turn down customers. Right. Yeah. Um, it was just like, you know what? Well, you could make more money today or you can spend more time with the family. And so yeah, knowing when to say no and when when you feel overwhelmed or like you would be packing out seven days, then, you know, to turn some stuff down. Um, so, mm -hmm. yeah, we did kind of at one point assess, okay, are we at our max? With the help that we have available, are we at our max? And knowing when that time came mm -hmm. um, was, was good. So we... Uh had kind of an, a detailed equipment overview and if you are watching this video and you didn't see their first video I will put a link it'll pop up on your screen toward the end of this video so make sure you can go back and watch that one watch the sequel before you watch the original but um, but anyway we we checked out your equipment um, that y'all had and you got a is it a 48 inch skag is that right yeah it's a 48 inch skag and, okay and you had a bunch of steel handheld mm -hmm. stuff so um Looking at your equipment, you had to start with. It, it were, did all that work out great? Yeah. If you had something to do differently, would you have got a 52-inch mower or a 48-inch, yeah. or what? What would you say about equipment? Yeah. So equipment. So I would I would recommend you know if you're about to start up a business like this, look and see what see what the other guys are carrying on their trailers. And um, you know if you're seeing a bunch of 60-inch decks, you know you're probably out with larger yards. Um, uh, around here, you see a lot of 48s and, and, and smaller, and so that's kind of what, where I landed was a 48, and eventually went smaller. I have a 36-inch walk behind now, and that's kind of the, the workhorse that, that we use because it can get into all, all the gates. Uh, I can do the backyards, and it ends up being a lot, even though it's smaller, it ends up being quicker in a lot of cases, and, um, but it still has the power to, to do tall grass, too. Um, and, you know, I think once we got started, I really started to, start thinking about backup equipment um, eventually the mowers are going to go out so for my 21 inch you know my backup I ended up purchasing a uh, 30 inch uh, X mark commercial 30 and so I thought that could back up my 21 uh, and then bought the 36 that could back up my 48 and now it's kind of reversed now I use the 36 all the time um, and then with the with the trimmers I used the steel combi systems which ended up being great because I got two of them and all the attachments and so if one motor goes out I can still do everything that I need to do. And if you were to get another one you would get a, another 36 probably? Yeah I'd probably get another 36 they're, they're great. So you, yeah for and do you ever do you use a push mower now that you have the 36? Or? Yeah they, I, I, I do some really small yards too that just okay yeah the push mowers and, and some of them some of my customers don't like the the way the 36 would cut. They don't like the the tracks it might leave in there, or the way it stripes. But uh, and and they really want the push mown look. And so I'll do that. And um, and yeah, some of them are just too small for the for the bigger 36 too. And you happy with that you went with an enclosed trailer versus an open trailer? <sighs> That's yeah, kind of, yeah. Overall, I mean, it's it, it gets cramped. Um, 
Uh, it's a little harder to work around. Uh, but overall, I mean, I don't have like a yard, like a secure yard or anything to, to, to keep my equipment in. And so it just acts as a double garage for me too. And it's nice for if you do any, um, buy any plants, you know, you can keep it enclosed. Yeah, yeah without getting any kind of wind damage on the plants. Yeah. All right, final question here, and uh, unless I think of another one, but um, if if people watching this that are uh, every year, you know, tons of people start a lawn care business, and um, if somebody was going to be starting next year, what advice would you uh, have for them? So save up money. If you got it right now, you've got this winter time, uh, save up as much money as you can. And there's, like I said earlier, there's so many podcasts, there's so many YouTube channels like this one. There's um, that, that really great resources. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, learn all you can, save up money, and research your equipment. Um, I ended up buying a lot of used equipment, which was a really good thing for us. Um, but you know, you, you just want to be able to have that that financial cushion in case something does happen, in case you get sick, in case uh, you know you get injured or something like that, and can't actually perform the work. Um, you know, it's going to buy you a little bit of time. It takes a lot of pressure off of your, you know. This, it takes a lot of stress away, um, so that was a huge blessing to us just to have that cushion, and um, so we could ease into it. And you didn't have to, you know, take every yard that came your way right away. You didn't feel the pressure to do that because you knew, okay, it's all right. We can wait until we get more mm -hmm. in our area, and um, so yeah, it helps in a lot of ways. But um, yeah. I know I, for I couldn't not say that. Prayer. I mean, really, this whole process was prayed through, and to see God move um, in front of you and clear a path and make a way and mm -hmm. bring you the right customers. I'd pray every day, bring us customers that we can be a blessing to, and that could be a blessing to us too. You know, you want it to be mutually satisfying relationship, and um, so all the time. So every time a customer told me, oh, this is such a blessing, like, oh, I could tell them, yeah, actually I pray that all the time. So, um, yeah. That's great. I, I think uh, seeing you guys from a distance at least, watching y'all, uh, seemed like y'all always working when I saw, so I thought it was great. You, you got plenty of, <laughs> plenty of work, and, but you know, it's hard work, but I think too, uh, the one thing I love about the lawn business, what, what other, you know, not a lot of businesses that you can start with that little amount of money and and be in the black pretty quickly you know because right. so many businesses are way in the hole um and maybe the ultimate potential is not you may not become multi-millionaires but you still uh, can do great and and is, uh, have a chance to success and so i'm really excited for for how year one went from you guys and maybe we'll maybe we'll get another update in the future yeah, we just wanted to say too that it was really encouraging it was so neat to hear from several of the people who watched the last video and they were all so encouraging and i'm sure it helped our website too to get a little bit of traffic and so we just wanted to tell everybody thanks for reaching out and all the prayers and blessings and encouragement and it was really cool we appreciated it all right, thanks, Greg and Betsy. Y'all were great. <laughs> All right, if you want to follow them, they're on uh, you know social media platforms: Instagram, Facebook. There's their website. Don't don't call them unless you want them to uh, live where we live and want business. Want to give them some uh, work, but you can follow them on Instagram. Follow their journey, and appreciate you watching. If you're watching the video, I'm Jason Creel. If you're wanting to start a lawn business, maybe you're already in lawn business. I've got a lot of resources over at Lawn Care Life. Do appreciate Greg and Betsy and and. Uh, it's been fun to watch them have a successful first year. We'll talk to you guys later. The link's popping up for their first video now if you want to go back and watch that one. Talk to you later. Bye.